In the past, scientists believed that Neanderthals were only capable of crude thought and animalistic savagery. But despite the common misconception that our ancestors were thick-browed thugs, Neanderthals resembled modern humans in many ways despite their prominent brow ridges, elongated brains, and large eye sockets. From Africa to Australia to the Americas, our Homo sapiens ancestors spread rapidly, meanwhile Neanderthals became extinct about 40,000 years ago. Regardless of the particulars, the Neanderthals perished in a variety of ways across their vast geographic range, which extended from Portugal to Iraq to Siberia and beyond. Historically, this point has been depicted as a triumph for our species, a vision in which we are the successful explorers or conquerors. Once upon a time, our closest ancestors became extinct. Now, tens of millennia after that extinction, we are now becoming aware of their existence. As distant as modern astronomy is from the concept of a universe bounded by the Milky Way, so too is today's view of these ancient relatives from the old conception of Neanderthals as dumb cave thugs, the losers on our family tree. And what the paleoanthropology of the 21st century reveals is an incredibly compelling portrait of a different type of human following their own path. For example, the Devil's Tower lies at the peninsula's southernmost tip, on the edge of the Strait of Gibraltar. The name alludes to an ancient stone watchtower that was mysteriously destroyed in a deliberate act around 1940, allegedly because it obstructed the line of fire for World War II surface-to-air guns. Gibraltar was, and still is, a British overseas territory. During the war, the British military deliberately tampered with archaeological sites on Malta, and Malta Heritage claims that it was at this point that they lost tens of thousands of enigmatic human remains from the island's subterranean chambers. Yet, more than 150 different bird species remains have been discovered in Gorham's cave at Gibraltar, many with tooth and cut marks, indicating that Neanderthals ate them. There is even evidence that they captured birds of prey such as golden eagles and vultures. We don't know if they laid out meat and then waited for the right moment to strike, or if they actively hunted birds, which is a much more difficult task. What we do know is that they did not necessarily eat all of the birds they hunted, especially vultures, which are high in acid. The majority of the cut marks are on the wing bones, with very little flesh. In fact, it appears they were catching these to wear the feathers. They appeared to prefer birds with black feathers. This suggests that they may have been used for decorative purposes, such as jewelry. Archaeologists recreated some intriguing Neanderthal habits to demonstrate what he meant. A frozen dead vulture was brought out and dissected in front of me to demonstrate how Neanderthals might have done so thousands of years ago. They removed the bird's body tissue with care. What remained appeared to be a magnificent and elaborate black feathered decorative cape that, of course, extended the length of the vulture's wingspan. Researchers speculate that they may have wrapped this around their shoulders. All of this points to one conclusion, Neanderthals had a sophisticated understanding of and appreciation for cultural symbols. The fact that Neanderthals could and would take these steps, including the creativity and abstract reasoning required to transform a flying animal into a decorative cape, suggests that their cognitive abilities were on par with ours. And, regardless of how intelligent they were, the creation of such cultural artifacts is one of humanity's defining characteristics. Another Spanish site where very ancient Neanderthal remains have been discovered with significant implications is Boloma Cave. The remains of four different Neanderthal individuals were discovered, but the remarkable aspect of this site is that sections of it date back 350,000 years, with noticeable tool construction differences, which suggests that this may have marked a technological transition. There are also numerous hearths being investigated, some of which are lined with stone and date back 250,000 years. The most perplexing discovery at Bolomer Cave was that young elephants were hunted and eaten throughout the occupation. It's difficult to believe that these elephant carcasses, along with many other heavy ungulates, were hauled up to the cave by hand. Keep in mind that the Bolomer Cave is not easy to reach while carrying nothing. It's a 300-foot climb up a cliff face. 
even though these Neanderthals were estimated to be six times stronger than Homo sapiens, carrying a deceased young elephant up to this cave requires Herculean effort. Initially, scientists believed that Neanderthals were incapable of complex thought and only engaged in barbaric, brutalist living. As evidence of these human ancestors' surprising human-like traits has accumulated, however, the opinions of scientists have shifted. Given how much time has passed since Neanderthals roamed Eurasia, it is impossible to accurately reconstruct their lives and deaths. Nevertheless, the mystery of these human ancestors and tantalizing hints that they were similar to us continue to inspire research and debate to this day. According to a new study from Portugal, the fact that they gathered food from the sea is also indicative of other abilities. The practice of harvesting shellfish implies that they must have understood how tides work and that harvesting bivalves in the wrong season can expose people to biotoxin poisoning. We have increasingly recognized the sophistication of Neanderthal behavior, but one thing that continued to distinguish the behavioral evolution of modern humans in Africa was the appearance of systematic collection of marine resources, and this marked a difference between the two populations, said the researchers. Evidence like this is important in showing Neanderthal populations had the capability for systematic exploitation of marine resources. The discovery, according to researchers, sheds some light on Neanderthal fishing practices, as they must have used baskets or bags because you can't walk over a mile with 10 to 20 kilos of shellfish in your hands. The Neanderthals probably also knew that shellfish collected at the wrong time could be toxic. Surprisingly, the archaeologists discovered vertebrate remains from sharks and eels, raising the possibility of Neanderthals wrestling giant eels and reef sharks. According to the researchers, the lack of other massive shell deposits in Europe could be due to a lack of preservation, shellfish cannot be transported far from the coast, so many such deposits in northern Europe would have been destroyed as polar ice caps advanced, while others may have been submerged as sea levels rose to today's levels. According to the researchers, the stretch of Portuguese coast where the new discovery was made is possibly the only location locally where such deposits could have been preserved. South Africa, on the other hand, experienced land uplift, which preserved many such deposits. The findings add to the growing body of evidence bridging the behavioral gap between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Furthermore, Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence in the case of Neanderthal intelligence. The findings are consistent with recent evidence that Neanderthals had surface ear and may have dived for shells to use as tools. Previous discoveries in Spain have shown that they decorated seashells and created rock art 65,000 years ago. The origins of human consumption of marine resources have long been debated. New studies present evidence that Middle Paleolithic Neanderthals exploited marine resources at a scale comparable to the modern human-associated Middle Stone Age of Southern Africa. Excavations at the site on Portugal's Atlantic coast have uncovered shell middens rich in mollusk, crab, and fish remains as well as terrestrial food items. Residents in the Middle Paleolithic may have had extensive knowledge of the sea and its resources. The Portuguese Neanderthals also exploited stone pine nuts in a manner similar to that previously identified in Iberia's Holocene. These findings broaden our understanding of the role of aquatic resources in Paleolithic human subsistence. Until now, there is little record of regular exploitation of aquatic foods in Neanderthal Europe. In contrast, marine resources are prominent in the archaeology of last interglacial Africa, alongside personal ornaments, body painting, and linear geometric drawings. The habitual consumption of aquatic foods and the fatty acids they contain, which promote brain development, underpins the acquisition of modernity in cognition and behavior, according to a human origins competitive advantage scenario. The resulting technological advances, demographic growth, and increased sociality would thus explain modern humans out of Africa expansion. Nevertheless, this viewpoint implies that the scarcity of marine foods at Neanderthal coastal sites is a true reflection of their subsistence behavior. However, Europe's Atlantic coast has resource-rich coastal waters comparable to South Africa's. But, 
Any evidence for last interglacial exploitation of marine resources from Scandinavia to France would have been lost due to subsequent ice cap advances and postglacial submergence of the vast continental platform. In contrast, the very steep continental shelf off Portugal, 50 miles south of Lisbon, has allowed for the preservation of both existing and submerged shorelines. One of the coast's erosion-protected seaside cave sites offers a unique opportunity to investigate whether significant last interglacial accumulations of marine food debris ever existed in Europe. Neanderthals foraged in last interglacial Iberia's littoral areas in the same way that early Holocene humans did. Subsistence-wise, Neanderthals were as diverse as one might expect, ranging from top-level carnivores in their periglacial range to fisher-hunter-gatherers in the right temperate settings. Shellfish harvesting requires knowledge of tidal regimes and, along the Portuguese littoral, awareness that eating bivalves between late spring and autumn poses a significant risk of biotoxin poisoning. These cognitive aspects of subsistence data are consistent with the rapidly growing evidence for jewelry, cave art, and other forms of symbolic material culture in Europe during the Middle Paleolithic. A corollary of the Iberian data is that consumption of aquatic foods is not the distinguishing factor between anatomically modern humans in Africa and coeval Eurasians, ultimately explaining the latter's extinction. Indeed, the possibility that the familiarity with marine resources and seascapes implied by the settlement of Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Guinea, and the Americas is deeply rooted in our genus history must now be considered. Thus, the major behavioral gap once thought to exist between Neanderthals and modern humans appears to be yet another example of absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Further discoveries of decorative shells and the use of red ochre pigment at other Neanderthal sites suggest that they may have created art. Again, if this is the case, it demonstrates that Neanderthals possessed symbolic abilities that were previously thought to be unique to humans. In point of fact, more cave paintings of animals and geometric shapes were attributed to Neanderthals in Spain in recent years. This time, they were dated to 64,000 years ago. The idea that the universe revolves around us, Homo sapiens, has been challenged by science in a number of ways. Since their discovery in 1856, Neanderthals have been portrayed as adversaries rather than fellow travelers along evolution's swift and mighty waterfall. In other words, the story we tell ourselves about our success and their failure is becoming less clear. It now appears that the period of time during which early Homo sapiens left Africa was significantly longer than previously believed, spanning more than 150,000 years, and including multiple reproduction phases. Nonetheless, these early explorers of Eurasia vanished into evolutionary oblivion, leaving virtually no surviving DNA lineages visible in people today, and were replaced by successive waves of populations. In other words, early Homo sapiens did not have a survival advantage over Neanderthals, who absorbed these earlier Homo sapiens. Meanwhile, while the Neanderthal species is thought to be extinct, they are not entirely extinct. Large portions of their genome are still present in us today. The last Neanderthals may have died, but their imprint on humanity will live on forever. Long gone is the vision of Neanderthals as brutish, club-wielding cave thugs.